Good morning, everyone. My name is Alex. My ham radio call sign is Whiskey America 2, Baker Mike Baker. Uh, another video. This time it's not on ham radio equipment. It's about a piece of equipment that I bought that I like very much, actually. Uh, and uh, it was broken when it arrived brand new. So here we go. What the problem was is, well, what the, what the unit is, actually, it's a uh, single cylinder wireless tachometer. It's uh, inductively coupled. That means that this antenna is placed in close proximity to a large inductor or coil, for those of you who are uh, uninitiated. Um, and it picks up the sparks from the unit and translates them into an analog reading that you got on the meter right here. Now if you look at the control panel there's a high RPM setting which goes to 15,000 revolutions per minute and a low setting which goes from 0 to 5,000 revolutions per minute. It's a, and it also has a battery check uh, option. You just switch that switch over into the battery check position and the needle slams against the right side uh, of the face which I'm not crazy about but I don't have a schematic for this thing so that's not a problem I can address right now the problem I had with it I was working on an old uh, uh, I'm working on restoring an old uh, Craftsman lawn tractor and uh, what happened was uh, the 0 to 15,000 RPM scale worked just fine. I went to use the 5,000 and it would automatically slam, the needle would slam against the right side of the, uh, the unit. And uh, I thought maybe it was somehow being overwhelmed so I did it without hooking it up to a, uh, to a uh, engine and it did the same thing. So it's obviously a circuit problem. Now uh, this is a uh, a unit that's made uh, in Canada so I was thinking uh, after I spent a hundred bucks on this thing and the prices do vary so you should check uh, I thought it was uh, overpriced but hey that's all on me I paid for it I wanted it I bought it that's it so I can't I'm not gonna be a baby and complain about the price but as you can see it's a very simple circuit very simple circuit board uh, what I ended up figuring out was, uh, since this is obviously hand soldered, it's not soldered by what's called a wave solder machine. And let me see, I have inspection marks here, somewhere around here. There we go, I think that's one of them, and there's another one right there. I'm thinking that their uh, quality control isn't all that great. Now, every once in a while, you do get, even under the best conditions, you get one that kind of skates by. I'd like to think that that's the um, occurrence here. Since the 15,000 RPM section worked just fine, that allowed me to um, kind of eliminate this whole area here. What I did was, this is where the RPM switches down here. So I was troubleshooting actually from here down. And what I came across, I found two solder bridges that I have since fixed. Now what a solder bridge is for the uninitiated, in case you're, you found got one of these and it's not working or whatever, I don't suggest you take it apart because that would uh, violate your warranty but uh, by the same token, uh, I'm an electronics technician by training, so uh, I figured can't hurt. What a solder bridge is, is uh, if you add too much solder, for instance, to this location right here, and it, you put such a big glob, it will, it will ble leach over to this, this circuit trace right here, which represents actually a wire. Everything years ago was done with point-to-point -point wiring. Then they came out with printed circuit boards, which was a huge blessing. It enabled everything to be uh, 
um, shrunk down in size and uh, more reliable but the problem is with these type of arrangements you can get cold solders which you don't uh, have enough saw enough heat on the solder joint and it comes out kind of gray looking and flaky or uh, you can get a solder bridge what ends up happening is the solder goes over onto this um, trace here and short circuits it so you get all kinds of weird and wonderful things happening uh, you could blow out components you could do all number of wacky things and get all kinds of weird readings also if the the substrate this green uh, from the board here isn't etched properly during the uh, the manufacturing phase and there's little pieces of metal embedded in here they could also short these two uh, islands these two uh, lines out and you've got a whole set of other problems because that's going to be pervasive through the whole board so what's happened here is I found two um, solder bridges I don't remember exactly where they were because I fixed them but as soon as I saw them uh, I knew what they were now this is hand soldered obviously uh, they did a nice job as far as the soldering goes because it's nice and silver and clean looking uh, so hooray for that but the problem was uh, I found uh, I found the two solder bridges and there's something else here I want to show you here's a perfect example right up here quality control now you see this right here now it's nicely soldered but you see this lead it's hanging right over this this uh, pathway here that could easily sooner or later short out against that that's a quality control problem that lead is much too long it should have been trimmed uh, either prior to soldering or just after that that problem was pervasive in this board I found quite a few of those uh, I, I did not fix that one because I wanted to show you what I was talking about so now when I went down here I found two bridges that were uh, that were overly soldered now let's take a look at this for a minute now here is an example of what it's supposed to be now if you come across something like this and you're not sure whether or not that's a solder bridge or the way it should be you look at it, it looks like a figure eight so in all probability these two are supposed to be connected that is a round junction point uh, where the lead of the component goes in and gets soldered to the other one but the problem is you don't know that for sure because you don't have a schematic in front of you so what you do is you take your 25 watt soldering iron your 25 watt soldering iron not your soldering gun leave the soldering gun in the toolbox for coaxial cable you take a solder sucker and you or or your solder wick you evacuate all the solder from this area and if these two points here are meant to be put together you're going to see two round uh, points without the solder and you'll that's how you'll know and you'll see that they're joined by the green trace the green solder trace that's how you know that they're they're um, soldered like that on purpose what you do sometimes is like you see some parallel lines here uh, you'll see a blob of solder um, across a line or two see here's another one here's another lead hanging out here not a good thing uh, you see a blob of solder there and what can happen is there's a very light coating of protection over these uh, circuit board traces and they are easily melted through uh, sometimes if they're not melted through now in a situation where the lead is hanging over the other uh, hanging right over the other pathway uh, when in time and vibration it's possible that that can bend over and scratch the other circuit board lead and you can end up with another short so the long and the short of the story is that once I cleared the solder bridge down in this area 
it worked just fine. And I've been using it. It's a great little meter. Uh, like I say, it's a simple circuit, but it works very well. But um, you got to be careful. Uh, whenever you're soldering stuff, you can't do stuff like this, where you leave an excess leads that can short out here, and uh, or big blobs of solder. Now I don't know who inspected this. You know what? I was going to say some nasty things, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'll just suffice it to say that they made a mistake. What you can't leave big blobs of solder, and they have uh, access to schematics. They should have been able to spot that and say, hey, wait a minute, those two points should not be connected. Now, I guess there's no way that they can uh, actually see if this thing works, uh, because obviously it wouldn't have worked. But uh, that's it. It's a simple circuit. Uh, and, and, and it's not just this company, but whenever I get something in the brand new and it doesn't work, I always fix it myself. Because God only knows how long it's going to take for you to get it back. And like I say, this is a simple circuit, and I figured I'd be able to handle it. I knew it was some kind of a soldering problem, uh, probably a short, and I was right. So uh, I'm not the world's greatest technician, but then some things are self-evident and pretty easy to figure out. So there you go. I'm not going to dissuade you from buying this unit. Actually, after I fixed it, I am very happy with it. It only takes three screws, one there, and two down here to remove. And uh, it works very well. And it's really nice. Uh, the uh, 5K RPM, uh, the uh, scale at the top, uh, is very, very handy. Uh, you don't have to squint while you're looking at the higher uh, revolution per minute scale. So all in all, I'm, I am happy with it. But I just figured I'd throw this out there in case uh, any of you had a problem. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, don't mess with it. Send it back. If you know uh, a ham radio operator in your area or somebody who's handy with electronic circuits, maybe they could take a quick look at it for you. They may be able to figure it out. Uh, the components in here are very uh, inexpensive and they're generic. They're everywhere. So uh, there's nothing exotic in this uh, meter that, that can't be replaced or fixed. So there you go for now. So uh, what I'm going to say to you is if you get a chance to buy this thing, buy it. It's uh, it's a it's all in all it's a decent enough meter and it's helped me a lot with my uh, lawn tractor restoration so that's it for now just wanted to give you a few helpful hints if you have a problem with this unit and I wish you all the very best please take care have a wonderful summer and we'll talk to you again soon this is Alex from Western Central New Jersey saying goodbye